What's up, peeps? Today, I'm creating a piece of art from a bunch of scrap material. I've had these drawers on hand for over eight months. They came from this cabinet that I transformed during last year's Halloween challenge. I knew I'd eventually do something with them. Well, today is that day. So if you like scrap wood art projects or upcycled art, then stick around while I get to disassembling these drawers. To use the parts for this art piece, I first had to destruct it. I didn't see any evidence of screws attaching the face on, so I figured it would easily tap off just using a rubber mallet. That wasn't exactly the case. but the small pry bar made quick work of the removal. take the drawer sides off with the pry bar, but that didn't really do too much. So I grabbed the mallet again, and that did the trick. I ended up taking apart two of the three drawers that I had on hand, and I still plan to turn that third one into a hardware spray box, but I just haven't had the chance to create it yet. Hopefully someday. Once the parts were separated, I could then pull all the staples and pin nails that were holding the whole drawer together. When I took the cabinet apart last October, I kind of thought it might have been a home build, but after taking apart these drawers, I am changing my mind and saying this was definitely factory built. And other than the drawer faces, the whole piece is made of MDF or medium density fiberboard. Anything that looks like oak is actually printed on, which you'll kind of see in a second when I'm sanding. MDF isn't the highest quality building material, but it'll work great for a scrap wood project. I won't be using the base, the drawer face, or the sides for this project, but I pulled the metal out anyway because I am going to do something with all of this in the very near future. And with everything pulled, I finally had the four pieces that I needed to complete this art project. So I tagged my husband in to help with the cuts. I've actually used the miter saw, in fact my first time using it was during the Halloween challenge, but relearning it at this point would take time, and time actually equals heat here in Phoenix during the summer.
and he made the small cuts with the jigsaw. Most went out to a corner, but two pieces had a section in the center of the edge that needed to be cut away, so... Just do these little skinny ones okay. and leave it, and I'm gonna score it and I'll chisel it out with an actual chisel. I knew this cutting board from the thrift store would come in handy at some point. Since my work table is plastic, I really needed this wood so I could chisel all the way through the MDF. But that worked great even though it left a little bit of unevenness on the surface. I honestly didn't care if it was a bit rustic because that's kinda what I'm going for. I got to sanding and like I said, that's when I discovered that this is made out of MDF. Before that, I was truly hopeful to get some type of wood out of this, but oh well. Anyway, I'm using a 240 grit sanding screen that I cut down to fit my mouse sander. And I keep the scraps that I cut off for hand sanding small details on other pieces. I used the teensiest bit of water to remove the dust from the surface because once MDF gets wet and swells, there's no bringing it back. But I really needed these to be dust free so I could seal the surface. Before I could seal the surface, I needed to glue together my like pieces, and I'm using Type Bond 3, which is a waterproof glue. So have you figured out what I'm making yet? You have to leave me a comment below if you already know what this is going to become. this spray paint simply because it was the fullest can of lighter paint that I have on hand that isn't metallic. Unfortunately, I forgot that my stain and a gloss finish don't really play well together, but we'll get to that in a second. I gave everything one solid coat and then left it to dry for a few hours. All right, now that these are spray painted, Oh my god, I love this so much. I'm so excited to do this. Um, they're pretty much dry at this point, I think. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not bad. I can paint over it. The only thing I need to do now is to find the thing that these are going to mount to. And each of these are about five inches, five and a quarter inches. So I want about a half inch in between each letter and about an inch on each end, so I'm just gonna go hunt through the scrap pile and see what I can come up with. So let's maybe just see what I've got in my stash over here. Oh, um, I probably need, ooh, what are you? This is the drawer front, that's really heavy though. Oh, let's see how big it is. Oh. This thing, by the way, is supposed to be up there, um, but I live near main roads here in the city and uh, the vibration from the cars on the road actually caused that thing to fall like all the time. So I'm trying to come up with a better solution. All right, let's see what we got here. It's 23, Oof, that's like just too short, right? All right, so the other scrap pile we have is this one. I don't know if there's going to be anything in there that's long enough, but I guess we'll figure it out. So 
so I got rid of the sticker and I sanded it down, but the dry fit revealed that I would need two, which I definitely knew, but I just totally flaked. For matching, all I had were these two pieces of somewhat dry pine. I wiped them down and I fixed a split in the end of one of them. Then I clamped it and left it to dry. But while that dried, I could get to sanding the other mounting board. So I did. I'm going to do all that off camera. With both mounting boards shored up, sanded, wiped down and dry, I got to painting. I'm using this Sherwin-Williams latex paint in the color Evergreen Fog because it's going to match my bedroom wall. That way the art will pop like it's floating off the wall. At least that's the plan. I'm using Folk Art Chalk Paint in Java to add a darker tone along the edges. Actually, I started this with my Faux FX Stain and Seal in American Walnut, but the glossy surface underneath caused it to spider out. So I wiped it back. But I knew the chalk paint would adhere great as a base. Can you see the vision coming to life yet? A couple hours later and it was ready for stain and seal. I used a one inch angled purdy brush to apply the stain over everything and that gave a nice subtle faux wood effect. Then I left it for the night to dry. In the morning, I gave everything a generous coat of General Finishes Flat Out Flat. And I'm only doing one coat of top coat here because this will hang on the wall and almost never get use. All right. I pre-drilled some pilot holes in hopes of saving the wood from splitting when I installed it. Then I used a slightly bigger bit to add a countersink depression in the top of the board. That'll keep the screw head flush with the surface once it's hung up. Yep, now I'll just do that three more times. I knew I wanted to glue these on, so I had to lose some of the paint in a few areas. 220 by hand just didn't cut it, so I rough measured and brought it out to the garage to get sanding with an 80 grit that I cut to fit my mouse sander. Back inside, I started gluing the letters onto the mounting board, and I just used whatever I had on hand to hold them tight down to the surface. I mean, this doesn't have to last a millennia, I just want something unique and fun for our bedroom. If you've seen our main bedroom makeover series, then you might have guessed already. This scrap wood project is an homage to our desire for cave life. If you like projects like this one, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing, which really helps my channel to grow. And it lets me know that you want me to make more upcycled art projects, which I would love to do. 
please subscribe if you haven't done that already, and then leave me a comment how you think I did using scrap materials to create this art project. If you want to connect with me, you can find me over on Instagram at the link down in the description, or come hang out over on my community tab. I love chatting with you all over there. Hang in for the final shots. Thank you so much for being here and watching, everyone. Later, peeps! Hopefully, see what happens here. Okay, yeah, though. Son of a biscuit, that was hot.